Hello, my name is Niyama Chanthana Bala, a PhD research scholar from Institute of Chemical Technology, Mumbai. I am delivering a presentation on nervous tissue, a topic under Unit 1, Tissue Level of Organization, Subject, Human Anatomy and Physiology. So the nervous system is a highly complex system. It is excitable, it has the ability to generate nerve impulses, which we will study ahead are also called as action potentials, and along with the endocrine system, the one that manages our hormones, it also has the ability to maintain homeostasis, which is nothing but maintaining a harmony or equilibrium between the internal and the external environment. Further, it also enables thinking, language, feeling, learning, memory and all functions and sensations. It has the possibility and the ability to process all this information and generate an appropriate response. The branch of medical science which deals with the normal functioning as well as disorders of the nervous system is termed as neurology. Neuro meaning nerve or nervous system and logy meaning the study of. If I had to divide, principally there are two types of cells which comprise of the nervous tissue. The first ones are called as neurons or nerve cells. They are sensitive to various stimuli. They are also responsible for converting that stimuli into electrical signals which are called as action potentials. These are responsible for communicating as well as regulating and conducting the action potentials or rather propagating them to different other neurons or to muscles or tissues or glands. Most, neuro most neurons comprise of three basic parts, one cell body and two kinds of cell processes termed as dendrites and axons. We'll study ahead what each of these topics or terms mean. Second type of cells are the neuroglia cells. These are the cells that support activities of the neurons. Now, with further research and advancement and understanding, we know that neuroglia have many more functions. So, what is the major structure or what does the nervous system look like? This is a human body. In an average adult male, the central nervous system, which is classified into the brain and the spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system comprises of all the nervous tissue that lies outside of the CNS. So, the nervous system is nothing but an intricate, highly organized network of billions of neurons and even more neuroglia. And the structures that make up this nervous system include the brain, the cranial nerves and their branches, the spinal cord, the spinal nerves and their branches, ganglia, enteric plexuses and sensory receptors. We'll understand each of these terms in a little more detail in the next slide. Further, some interesting trivia, the mass of the nervous system is just 2 kgs, which is nearly 4.5 pounds, and it comprises nearly 3% of the total body weight. That makes it one of the smallest, yet the most complex of the 11 body systems in our body. So if I had to organize the nervous system, it is divided or classified into the CNS and the PNS, Further, communication that occurs between the CNS and the body happens because of the peripheral nervous system. The efferent and the afferent or the motor and the sensory neurons are the further classification, which are responsible for taking the information from the CNS to the muscles and bringing the information from the muscles or the sensory organs to the CNS respectively. Further, they're classified into the somatic nervous system that controls voluntary movements, and the autonomic nervous system that controls involuntary responses. The involuntary responses are further classified into the sympathetic division, also responsible for fight and flight responses, and the parasympathetic division responsible for rest and digest responses. This can be further classified into the enteric nervous system, which is nothing but the brain of the gut. So let's understand the central nervous system comprising of the brain and the spinal cord and how the communication occurs between the CNS and the PNS. As I spoke of earlier, the somatic nervous system is giving all its responses that are voluntary in nature and ultimately only go to the skeletal muscles. Whereas the autonomic nervous system can go to the smooth muscles, the cardiac muscles and the glands. And the enteric nervous system will not only go to the smooth muscles and glands, but also the endocrine cells of the GI tract. 
with this let's come to the basic understanding and come to a reflection point where i would like you all to pause the video and answer the following questions what are the components and functions of the somatic nervous system the autonomic nervous system and the enteric nervous system second which subdivisions of the peripheral nervous system control voluntary actions and which ones control the involuntary actions after you have successfully attempted these questions you can move to the next slide so the brain which is nothing but a component of the central nervous system is enclosed within the skull and that contains about 100 billion or 10 raised to the power 11 neurons there are 12 pairs of cranial nerves which are communicating or coming out of the brain both towards the right side as well as the left side of the body and they are numbered 1 through 12 then what is a nerve a nerve is nothing but a bundle of hundreds to thousands of axons along with that associated connective tissue and blood vessels that lie outside the brain and the spinal cord each nerve has a defined path and is responsible for serving a specific region of the body for example the cranial nerve number 1 which is also called as the olfactory nerve is responsible for carrying the signal of sense of smell from the nose to the brain now let's understand the spinal cord the spinal cord is a portion of the central nervous system that connects the brain through the foramen magnum of the skull it is also encircled by bones of the vertebral column just like the brain is enclosed within a skull the spinal cord is enclosed within a vertebral column since these are such important organs of the body they need to be protected further the spinal cord contains 100 million neurons just like the cranial nerves the spinal cord is also responsible for producing 31 pairs of spinal nerves which emerge from the spinal cord and each has a specific region either on the right or the left side of the body the next term what is ganglia a ganglia is nothing but a swelling or a knot a singular word would be ganglion it is nothing but small mass of nervous tissue that consists primarily of neuronal cell bodies so if i had to classify ganglia are nothing but a collection of cell bodies that lie outside of the central nervous system they're located outside the brain and spinal cord and very closely associated with the nerves that are cranial and the spinal nerves next what are enteric plexuses enteric plexuses are extensive networks of neurons that lie or are controlling the organs of the gastrointestinal tract just like um contraction of the smooth muscles or secretion of certain glands secretion of certain hormones they also help to regulate the digestive system lastly what are sensory receptors all the associations all the integrations that happen within the brain are because of certain stimuli that are received by the sensory receptors so the sensory neurons have dendrites which are separate specialized cells that help to monitor changes that occur in the internal as well as external environment of our body for example the photoreceptors in the retina of the eye are an example of sensory receptors that are sensing the information and sending it to the brain for further processing let's take a pause here and i would like you all to note down the different functions or roles of the brain the nerves the digestive tract the ganglia and the spinal cord whatever we have discussed so far after you have successfully solved this reflection point you can move to the next slide now let's understand the functions of the nervous system as we've already dis discussed it is a highly complex and diverse system it has three important functions number 1 sensory with the help of sensory receptors it can detect internal as well as external stimuli for example if i have to talk of internal stimuli it could be as simple as an increase in the levels of acid in the blood a shift in temperature a shift in ph whereas an external stimuli could be as simple as a raindrop that lands on your arm that sensory information is carried into the brain and the spinal cord with the help of the cranial and spinal nerves talked about previously 
The second important function is integrative. In the brain, the information that has been sent by the sensory receptors is integrated or processed and the information is analyzed and then stored either some of it or completely all the information and further decisions are made so that an appropriate response can be taken. For example, perception is nothing but the conscious awareness of sensory stimuli. This is something that occurs in the brain. Third important function, as you can probably guess, is motor. The nervous system can elicit an appropriate motor response by activating the muscles such as glands, uh, muscles or glands which are nothing but effectors through the help of cranial and spinal nerves. The stimulation of these effectors causes an appropriate response. For example, the muscles can contract or the glands can secrete. Here I will stop with part one of the nervous system and move on to the second topic in the forthcoming lecture in the next video presentation. I hope you all have understood what the nervous system is about and the functions of the nervous system. Thank you.